Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to go over um, degrees versus radians, how to calculate radians, what radians are, where they're from, and I'm going to go over five different style of problems. One of those style of problems is convert degrees to radians as an exact value. The second style of problem is approximate value degrees to radians. The third style of value will be convert radians to degrees as an exact value, radians to degrees as approximate value, and then finally, being able to calculate exact value of trig functions like four sine of pi over three, cosine of pi over three. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I really wanna point out that you really need to understand is the difference between exact and approximate. Exact would be something like pi over two without a calculator, Approximate is a decimal approximation you do with your calculator. So something like pi over two, you would enter 3.14 divided by two and get the approximate value of 1.57. So if the problem says exact value, you are not using a calculator, your answer will be in fractional form like this, or in terms of the Greek letter pi. Approximate value, you're using your calculator to get a decimal approximation. The next thing is degrees versus radians. Degrees are units. All the way around the circle is 360 degrees. Radians are also units, but they're actually unitless. So whenever you're working in degrees, you always have to attach the unit to it. Whenever you're working in radians, there won't be any value or units attached to it because it's unitless. So that's the whole reason we're going to radians is that we can uh, apply any kind of units we want in an application problem if it's in radians. And I'm going to show you why radians are unitless. So all the way around a circle, the outside of a circle is called the circumference. The circumference is equal to 2 times pi times r, right? And if our radius is equal to 1, our circumference would be 2 times pi times 1 or 2 pi. Okay, two radiuses is also a diameter, so circumference is equal to diameter times pi. This from Algebra 1, geometry, early on we've been working with this equation a long time. If you were to measure circumference in inches, the diameter across the circle would also be in inches. And if I were to solve for pi, I'd divide both sides by diameter in inches. And I could see that pi is actually a ratio of circumference to diameter, and then my units, inches, cancel. So pi, or radian measures, have no units because they cancel right here, and it's unitless. So if I have a number like 3.5, and it's in radians, I don't have to write any radians here because they're actually unitless. I sometimes do write rad or radians, um, but I only do that as a placeholder. So that's where radians are from. So if all the way around the unit circle in degrees is 360 degrees, if my unit circle has a radius of one, all the way around the circle in radians would be two pi r, where r is one, or two pi. So they're, they're equivalents, however they're different units. So if all the way around is two pi, halfway around will be half of that pi, a quarter of the way around would be pi over two, so one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, three pi over two, four quarters. So I'm splitting it into quarters. Then I could split those in half. So half of a half is a quarter. So now I have one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters, six quarters, seven quarters, and then back to eight quarters. So all the way around is two pi in radians, and then I could split it into quarters or eights or halves, and that's the whole reason uh, we're with 360 degrees, right? Because it's divisible by halves, quarters, eights. It's also divisible by 30s and 60s, and that gives us our exact value problems. So you might recognize that pi over four as 45 degrees, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, back to 360. 
I could also split it into thirds and sixths. Um, so right here, this value right here, remember we have a 30 degree angle. Well, 30 degrees is one six of the way to pi. So pi over six and 30 degrees are exact value equivalents or one six. I could also split it into two six, which would give me my um, 60s. But my 60 right here, right, 60 is one third of the way to 180. So this is pi over three or 60 degrees. And those are equivalents, degrees, radians. It's a lot to take in. The biggest idea here is that radians are unitless because I divide through here and my units cancel. And the whole reason we're going towards radians is if I'm in the medical field and I'm studying air in the lungs over time, I'm not gonna measure in degrees, I'm gonna measure that air in cubic centimeters and I'll be able to attach units to it if it's unitless and that's why we're going to radians. Okay, let's jump ahead to some type of problems. Exact value means without a calculator. This is just a number 60 degrees. I can only multiply by one so as not to affect the value. So I'm going to multiply by a factor of one, which means the numerator and denominator have to have the same weight. So I know that all the way around is 360 degrees. So 2 pi and 360 have the same weight. This is a full revolution. This is a full revolution. Or if I cut that in half, pi is equal to 180 degrees. These two things have the exact same weight. So that means if I put pi over 180, I'm multiplying by one, doesn't affect the value. The whole reason I multiply by one is so these degrees cancel. 60 will go into here one time, into here three times, and leave me with pi over three. So that's an exact value degrees to radians. I start with degrees, 60 degrees, and I end in radians. And my degrees cancel out. Approximate value degrees to radians, I'm gonna multiply by the exact same thing, pi over 180. And then my degrees are still gonna cancel. That's gonna give me radians, but it, it's an approximate value. So now I'm using a calculator. Let me pause and find a calculator. All right, found one. So I'm gonna go 37 times pi, 3.14 equals, divided by 180, and I get 0.65. So that right here is radians. I don't write any radian unit on there because it's unitless. My degrees cancel out, and that gives me an approximate radian measure. Exact value radians to degrees. Still going to multiply by one, but now I'm going radians to degrees. So I'm going to put pi here and 180 here. So the difference here is I'm reciprocating that because I'm going from radians to degrees. This is pi over three. This is 180 degrees over pi. My pi's cancel. I'm multiplying fractions. Three goes into here once into here 60 times. And I have degrees there, so I have 60 degrees. Approximate value radians to degrees. I still multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians. And then this is just a number, right? It's not a variable or anything. So I just use the pi key on my calculator. Oh, there it is down there. So I'm going to go 0.34 times 180 equals divided by that pi right there, 3.14 equals, and I get 19.5, and that's gonna be degrees. Really important, if it's degrees, you have that unit attached to it because degrees are a unit. Radians are kind of a unit, but they're unitless, if that makes sense, and that's really the power here. Okay, let me do one last problem here. This looks really complicated, but it's not too hard. Hopefully I could see pi over three is 60 degrees because it is one third of the way to pi. And as we work with this more and more, you'll get more and more comfortable with it. But pi over three is right here. 
and it's an exact value problem, so I know it has to be one of my three triangles, 30, 60, 90, isosceles right, or imaginary. So remember, here's a 30, 60, 90. On a 30, 60, 90, the ratios of sides will always be in the ratio of one to two to root three. Remembering opposite 30 is one, opposite 60 is root three. Hypotenuse is two. And the isosceles right, this is 45 and 45. The ratio of sides is always one to one to root two. When you're in different quadrants, they'll have different signs, but the ratios will always be the same. So pi over three, I could hopefully see that as 60, or I can multiply it by 180 over pi. Seeing my pi's cancel, three goes into 180 60 times. So pi over three is a 60 reference angle. It is in the first quadrant right here at 60. The side opposite it, opposite 60 would be root three. Side opposite 30 would be one. The hypotenuse would be two. So this four is still a four. Sine is a ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of pi over three would be the sine of 60, opposite over hypotenuse, root three over two. Cosine of pi over three is a cosine of 60. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, one half. Now I have three fractions multiplied together. Four times root three times one over one times two times two, which is gonna be four root three over two times two, four. My fours cancel and my final answer is root three. So what is the exact value of this trig function here? The answer is root three. I know there's a ton of information there. It'll come. It's going to take a lot of work. Um, but I'm hoping this video will help you get started uh, converting from degrees to radians, radians to degrees, and then also the difference between exact and approximate value. All right, well, thanks for watching. Please comment below. I'll be very responsive to comments uh, if you have any questions on this.